in major Indian in universities, including the IITs and IAMs. Mr. Abe is an experienced medical researcher with a demonstrated history of working in the medical device industry. Specialization in virtual reality, augmented reality, and artificial intelligence, managing extended reality developers community nationwide, hosting shows to motivate and guide people in XR technologies are few of his added virtues. With this, I request Mr. Abhi to please begin his presentation. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Soumya. It's a very wonderful explanation, very wonderful introduction of mine. And I'm really, really happy to be a part of uh, this initiative uh, so uh, let me know if you guys can see my screen and uh, to begin with this uh, presentation first thing first make sure you guys have enabled uh, the 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 uh, okay so there's a setting you will find and make sure you are receiving a 720p all right so by default it's going to be a 360p but make sure you are receiving 720p so if i show setting on my screen it, it's going to look like something like this oh hold on let me turn off this yeah okay so here uh, i by default choose 360 but make sure it's 720 so that you can see my screen very very clear all right and if you guys uh yeah followed this step then you guys are able to see my screen now with full comfort right all right so we are good to go with the session and uh, yeah it looks like we can begin anytime now i'm just yep yep we are good to begin just give me a second all right so yeah looks like we are good to go let me present the screen and uh, let me start doing that okay 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 everybody can see my screen can i get some interactivity Uh, Abhi sir, you yeah, told yeah, us to I change like our display yeah. settings, right? Yeah, yeah. There's a resolution yeah, yeah. setting, and make sure yeah. your receive resolution is not 360; it's 720, right? Yes, sir. Just, just, just give it a minute, please, so that we can do the settings. Surely, surely, surely. Because only then you will be able to see high-res uh, image. Though we are not going to quote anything in this session, so it's it's not really really uh, necessary. But it's good if you could do that. Uh, done sir thank you awesome so yeah looks like we are good to go and let me start the session by uh, i mean thanking everyone who organized this session uh, so first and foremost uh, the, the aict community so aict all india council of technical education is doing amazing job by uh, hosting these faculty trainings all over india and we are really thankful uh, that they uh, came to us and uh, we basically initiated these sessions so expose it we are expose it we are uh, the founder of expose it we are roshan rawal i would like to thank him uh, for organizing this session and contacting our community my community is uh, this one this uh, little logo in the left corner uh, this is basically extended reality developers of india and as uh, the host already mentioned it's india's biggest xr community what is xr uh, i believe you guys have introductory sessions in the earlier sessions in which you might have understood what is xr if you guys already have not uh, i mean have no idea about xr i can start with a simple introduction xr in, in, includes uh, the ar and vr augmented reality and virtual reality in it so 
XR is uh, the future operating system is going to be spatial computing oriented operating system, which means they are going to be XR computing involved in that. All right. So uh, in future, we are also going to see the blended uh, version of augmented reality and virtual reality, which is also known as mixed reality, which means uh, the virtual reality and augmented reality are not going to be seen as two separate components, but one individual, which is mixed reality and which is all over around us in the real spaces, which is also known as location based computing, which is uh, spatial computing and location access and all those things okay so i hope uh, you guys have a little bit knowledge about that and you had a little bit uh, little sessions about these technologies introductory sessions which were included in this uh, same sort of seminar in case you don't have i already have a series which i'll recommend you after this session all right so let me start by this all right so this is today's topic this is computational thinking now uh, you guys are already professors you guys are already faculties of several colleges you guys uh, might not need to uh, go through this session but this is a very great session which sort of brings everyone on the same page for example if uh, somebody has a very good technical background but somebody else has not that technical knowledge or understanding of how to deal with machines or how machines communicate uh, okay it's a very fascinating subject actually uh, so i do recommend at least following this session so it it brings everyone on the same level it's very uh, suppose uh, obviously augmented reality and virtual reality are advanced technologies and have some sort of prerequisites uh, this session computational thinking clear tries to clear all the uh, prerequisites of these technologies okay so we are going to take a look into that okay so now uh, i usually ask this question from the kids whenever i do that but you guys are already faculties but still what is this okay uh, what are these numbers what do you see on screen okay uh, so maybe you interpret these numbers as one two and three all right or maybe you interpret these numbers as 123 okay there could be two ways of interpreting what is this all right so uh, if you are interpreting one two three okay you understand uh, the basic element of maths which are numbers okay but if you say this these are uh, 123 then you are doing something in your mind which is related to this okay uh, so what is this this is actually the decimal number system all right so this is the first place this is the 10th place and this is the 100th place you have this sort of concept in your head already this is why you are interpreting this as one two and three and you are interpreting it as 123 okay so i'm going to uh, you are sort of doing this sort of calculation in your head all right uh, so 100 times 1 10 times 2 1 times 3 and adding them all all right then it begins 123 all right why this happens obviously there's a, a base of each number system when we have a number system there is a base all right what is the base base is the amount of characters which can be used in that number system all right so in the human number system we can call this because this is very since very long with the humans all right so this in this human number system we have 10 characters so what is our base obviously 10 all right so it's a base 10 number system which means uh, the first position is the 10 to the power 0 all right what is 10 to the power 0 it's 1 it's 1's place second position is 10 to the power 1 what is 10 to the power 1 10 10's place third position is 10 to the power 2 what is 10 to the power 2 100 100th place all right similarly we have another number system which have different bases like hexadecimal is a number system and but here the most important what we are what we are most interested in when we are talking about machine is binary all right so now let's take a look at that there is a base 10 number system base 10 means we have 10 characters from 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 okay these are total 10 characters and this is why we have decimal number system on the other hand we have just two characters which mean it is a base two number system it means binary number system got it okay so now let's 
dive into this that how this binary number system calculation works all right so similarly previously we had uh, 10 to the power 0 10 to the power 1 10 to the power 2 all right now since the base is uh, 2 only it's going to the base is going to be two same and the the arrangement is going to be very same okay uh, now we have 2 to the power 0 which is 1 again 2 to the power 1 which is 2 2 to the power 2 which is 4 2 to the power 3 which is 8 and so on all right so this is our new binary number system all right so uh, now let's uh, talk about this how this is going to be work uh, I'm going to go back to this okay? so now here are some simple calculation okay uh, here this number representing 10 times 2 because they these uh, number uh, this place is managing 10 different ranges all right 10 different knobs 10 different levels and this value has to be in between those 10 different levels similarly this is representing the second level of that value of that number system so we tend to the 10 times 2 but here in decimal uh, something is changing it, it can only represent either on or off okay in case it's representing off it means we multiply uh, whatever this number is to uh, 0 if it's representing off and if it's representing 1 like here we multiply this number this base number to uh, again uh, 1 which means it, it's the base itself all right so it's a very simple calculation okay so uh, if i have to uh, know that what it's written in binary okay 110 again uh, 110 doesn't represent 110 in binary okay it's surely 110 but it's not 110 if we have to convert it into decimal number system we have to do this sort of calculation that 4 times 1 which is going to be 4 plus 2 times 1 which is going to be 2 4 plus 2 is going to be 6 but 1 times 0 and here is nothing which is going to be 0 again so the total number which is this uh, 110 is representing is 6 all right so if you guys had any sort of confusion till here uh, let me know so any confusion in binary convers uh, conversion or anything i can go over explanation even deeper okay okay looks like uh, we can make this interactive i'm not looking at chats let me look at chats in case you are having some uh clear okay somebody said it's clear okay all right awesome now we are going to uh, move further because now we have the very fundamental of how to convert numbers numbers by numbers i mean human numbers decimal number system how to convert decimal number system to binary number system all right we got that idea now we can go over this okay since we can convert decimal number system to binary number system and we don't uh, communicate in numbers only all right we have letters to communicate by letter i mean a b c d if i say hi and hi has a meaning hi is consist of two characters h and i all right and these characters does mean something to us all right but we cannot we cannot tell machines that uh, we are trying to say hi okay so it's a big problem because we can only convert numbers to binary okay we can only convert numbers to binary okay so to solve this prob uh, problem we had to came up with some sort of map all right there has to be some sort of map what is a map map is nothing but map is nothing but uh, a logic behind input and output mapping map itself consists of mapping okay so for example if i have 65 now for no reason i'll say that 65 is i'm for now i'm going to call 65 a okay so if whenever i am going to see a i'm going to equate it with 65 whenever i'm going to see 65 i'm going to say it's a all right so and again uh, the best part of this sort of map is everybody in the world should agree with the map 
all right only that's the possible way of communication if i have a different map and you have a different map then we are not going to be able to communicate all right or there is going to be too much of conversion for example if i have a different map and you have a different map i have to convert my map first into some standard map and then reconvert from the standard map to your map to be able to communicate okay so it's better to have a standard map all right uh, in our language uh, in machines language we uh, made this map in early 50s and this map is known as ASCII okay uh, American Standard Code of Information Interchange all right so uh, in this ASCII map we assigned position to characters because that was only way we have to somehow convert our meaningful uh, knowledge like what is our meaningful knowledge uh, we express our meaningful knowledge in form of letters characters all right so uh, we have to uh, we build this map and on this map we assign a to 65 number okay uh, why it's 65 it doesn't have to be a logic but it's just a map which is a is point where a is pointing to 65 okay so we similarly we build uh, from a is 65 b is going to be 66 and so on and previous prior to that smaller a is going to be a different number okay uh, you can also uh, see the number for smaller a and similarly each and every character whichever the character is there which you are aware about has to be assigned or mapped to a number like this an integer value a decimal number okay because we only can convert decimals to binary we cannot convert characters to binary directly there's no way okay so we have to assign this sort of map you guys got my idea i explained it i think too much okay uh, it's a simple concept but it's a very important concept okay so again since we have this map now what happens a is converted to 65 and then 65 is being again converted to this value which is again it's 65 but not written in decimal it's written in binary so that's how we can indirectly convert our characters to binary language and again uh, you might think that okay there's a lot of calculation involved in that it's a binary is not for humans all right uh, there's a lot of calculation in order of, of course uh, humans can decode the binary of course human can convert the binary and understand it but it's a lot of work for human to do that why do we even use binary at the first place why don't we use a direct language to communicate with computers and the answer to this is uh, a lot more physical okay the answer to this is going to be a lie in the physics okay so it, uh, the answer is very simple uh, it's very easy to maintain two states okay it's very hard to maintain six or eight or 16 or 10 states okay so if you we talk about a physical switch for example if you have ever seen a ceiling fan you might have aware of a regulator a regulator is a six state switch okay it can keep six states it can be on zero on one two three four and five okay? so it contains six stages of uh, something it represents six stages okay if we wanted to convert or directly convert our language to machines we had to come up with at least a 10 stage regulator now the, this 10 stage regulator is possible it's totally possible i'm not saying it's not possible but what's not possible is reducing the size of this uh, 10 state calculator okay this 10 state uh, uh, you can say integrated circuit we have if we have to reduce it to the size of atoms which we right now are doing uh, right now a single uh, a, a single uh, state keeping system is a size of an atom even okay i keep forgetting the name of a transistor uh, so i'm saying size keeping system okay so but a single transistor is now a size of an atom and it's keep reducing the size and uh, we'll hit the uh, the quantum limit of uh, the size okay uh, so if we talk about the the if we talk about this quantum limit there is a quantum phenomena which happens which is called quantum tunneling okay so uh, it happens on the quantum scales which means when we reduce something to the size of atoms 
they don't seem to follow the boundaries okay so which means it will stay in both states or you cannot actually check which in which state it is but to keep state uh, we have only the limit of uh, at least one atom okay till one atom we can reduce it uh, if we reduce it to subatomic level it's going to uh, break the boundaries of physics okay and uh, to tackle that situation we are going to have quantum computers and uh, that's not uh, the topic of this session so i'm not going to talk about much about quantum computers but again i did a session about those as well so you can find it on uh, my uh, uh, my channel uh, surely you can find quantum computer session okay but now in this session we are focusing on languages and computational thinking so so if i send someone a message hi okay now we understood that how to convert human language into machine language all right so whenever i send someone a message hi my machine is literally sending 72 73 and 33 to someone's message someone's other device okay again there is going to be a lot of conversion there is going to be a lot of packaging of data a lot of compressing of data but the core data is 72 73 and 33 which is being sent to somebody's mobile device across the world Whenever you send someone a message, you are actually sending these values to him. Okay, think about it. Okay, now let's talk about smileys. You will say, okay, uh, but they, they, they are not characters and we have to send someone a picture. Okay, again, the answer lies in a map. We sort of, even the tele, uh, in, even this, uh, this character H does not actually represent 72 okay this character h is actually a font uh, and a font is actually a image all right so we have somehow mapped these font these images to 72 73 and 33 but to understand these uh, characters and these fonts we have to understand what is a image at the first place all right so i'm going to talk about that to talk about image we have to first understand what is an image is made of okay so if you think about this an image is made up of colors okay uh, this is this uh, plus sign is a color combination you can surely see it's distinguishable from the background color and that's what makes it an image but how do we represent colors okay in machines what is the way to represent colors and the answer lies in three values okay and these three values are actually three numbers and these numbers represent three different color channels and with the combination of three different color channels we form these colors and with the series of these colors we form an image okay uh, now i'm going to talk about these three colors so these three colors are r g and b red green and blue okay why these red green and blue why not any other color why not violet magenta and sapphire okay uh, why not any other color so the answer is the human eye has three cones okay human eye has three cones uh, inside them and these three cones these three spots are sensitive to these three colors okay so whenever some color is being sent to human eye suppose it's orange so human eye says oh whenever the orange light is being sent to my eye the brain is going to compute the orange eye is going to excite a little bit of red a little bit of uh, green a little bit of blue and with the combination of how much red how much green and how much blue excitation is there the brain is going to compute that color as orange for us okay so similarly we just uh, copy and paste that process that logic of human eye and replicate it in the machines in the screens okay so in your screen you have three sort of pixels the red pixel the green pixel and the blue pixel obviously these red green and blue pixel has a range of intensities this intensity is going to be 0 to 255 if we talk about again 8-bit channel okay uh, so uh, again there are more than 8-bit as well uh, for simplicity i'm going to talk about just 8-bit okay there are 16-bit and there are 32-bit and even 64-bit channel is going to be there okay uh, so let's talk about that 
So suppose if uh, R has 8-bit uh, spectrum, so what does it really mean? It means on the zero, the red light is going to be definitely off, 100% off. On the one, it's going to emit some sort of red, a little, little bit red, okay? On fully, fully 255 value, the red bit, the red pixel is going to emit full intensity of red. Okay, in between that like 100 is going to be somewhere half intensity of red. Okay, so that's how we are maintaining several state of red, several intensities of red. Okay, so that is R, G and B, red, green and blue channels and all these red, green and blue pixel makes up an image. All right, so now let's talk about, as you already know this, image yellow image is made up of uh, these red green and blue values but why the color yellow it's a philosophical question okay so why we choose color yellow for all the smileys and the answer lies in this i message okay so coincidentally or uh, or or you can say they planned it this way Okay. So if you add up these color values, convert this message high 72, 73 and 33 and you, you create a color with these color values, okay, you assign R to 72, B to uh, 73 and G to uh, this 33, you will get exactly the same this yellow pixel color. Okay, so this uh, pixel color, the color of smiley it itself represent uh, the message hi, which is the first introductory message. In fact, in uh, pro any programming language, the first introduction or the first code which we write is hello world. So always a greet. Okay, so again, yeah, it's amazing. It's, it's a fun fact to know. All right, so you may ask uh, how all these pixel works again. They, uh, these images, uh, like I already said about font, they are assigned, if a font is assigned 65 and it, the font looks like A, which is an image which looks like A, uh, this particular smiley which looks like something and we assigned, again, there's a map for this as well and this number is not just 65, this number is a much huge number, okay, it's, it's a, uh, how do we call it? Uh, 1 lakh, 1 lakh 28,512 is assigned to this particular smiley, okay? So that's how whenever you send this smiley, this number, this whole 1 lakh 28,512 being converted to binary, which means it becomes a much more bigger binary message and being sent to someone. When the other machine sees the exact pattern of binary code, it reconverts it to this number and search for which uh, ma which image represent to this number and found this image in the map which every device share so every device has these sort of maps shared in between them got it okay now let's dive further into images so I again said uh, there are color images which has three channels R G and B but they are single channel images which are grayscale images okay so grayscale images are good for if you want to do for example any sort of computer vision code and any sort of computer vision stuff it's just uh, perfect because uh, computer vision doesn't care about uh, colors okay and mostly it doesn't care about colors uh, you can do all sort of edge detection and everything on single channel images so they are pretty awesome okay i'm going to talk about this particular image whenever you see any image like this abraham lincoln image okay uh, it's very blurry still we can recognize abraham lincoln it's a very very um, uh, it's it tells us very cool details about human mind because uh, even with this less amount of information you are being able to understand or recognize a person okay so it tells uh, in fact uh, according to a, a brain study a neurological study uh, they found that even with the 5% information of a face human can detect or recognize a face only just five percent information of a face being visible okay so humans human uh, brain is very good with that task again if you want to learn about artificial intelligence i talk about a lot on artificial intelligence that how computers can understand uh, the images and all that uh, and we are again copying the pattern of how brain works and applying it to uh, artificial intelligence and so so 
yeah i talk a lot about, about that on my channel so you can also i'll give you the link uh, later on okay so talking about that come back to abraham lincoln so whenever you see, you see any image on screen no matter what image we are talking about you see this sort of arrangement of pixel we call it a two-dimensional pixel array okay what is an array array is basically a sequence of numbers value vectors whatever okay so here we got uh, some numbers okay and these numbers are representing intensities okay of that particular gray channel for example if the value is zero which means gray channel is not activated a single pixel which means it can represent only white light okay it if it's full if it's 255 it's presenting hard white absolute white if it's fully off if if it uh, the state is zero it representing nothing it representing black pixel okay so you can see this is the darkest pixel and it, the value is here is zero all right this is again the darkest pixel the value zero this is a little bit lighter pixel here and the value is 75 this is a full bright pixel value 252 okay so you got my point so to represent any sort of image you have to sort of know what should be the color representant of the representation of that value and we can represent the colors based on the value which is actually intensity of that color how intense is that color how dark is that color okay or how saturated is that color so uh, again the pic image is there image is being converted to these numbers or basically image is this number and then these number map is what uh, computer cares about which means if you have to send somebody an image whole lot series of these number is being converted to binary each number of these uh, value is being converted to binary of course there is going to be a lot of packaging of this content because without the metadata without the packaging the other computer will not be able to understand that how to interpret these numbers okay i got a bunch of numbers but what does this number mean okay so uh, we have to send some amount of packaging with this information which is metadata information about information okay uh, what is information about information metadata is basically that what sort of information it is for example how many rows and how many columns are going to be in this metadata in this image whatever the value i sent so for example if you have got 500 times 500 uh, pixels so it's going to be 500 rows and 500 columns arrange it in that order and you'll get your image voila now let's talk about videos interesting what are videos okay we see videos all the time but what are those okay so we are going to talk about this okay interesting why this you are right now looking at the invention of video this is the first video ever produced in the world we first produce this running horse video uh, somebody produced and you might it might look like a video but it's nothing but 16 images as you can see in the bottom left corner of this video there are 16 numbers which are being switching very very rapidly in each one second these 16 images are being switched rapidly all right so you got my point okay so there is no such thing as a video all right it's just images being switched very very fast and to give you a perspective these are those images which are being switched as you can already see there's no such thing as video it's just images being switched very very fast okay and there is a limit to which human understand uh, in the real world there are actually videos okay there is actual motion but in terms of when we are calling about screens and when we are talking about projections and when we are talking about uh, uh, the videos okay there's no such thing as motion real motion okay so now how do we mimic this motion we switch these 
photos very very rapidly how rapidly uh, so the the number the hard point is again uh, this change person to person some if somebody is very very fast and frequent and very good with very good observation this number is going to be higher if his observation is dull or he's an old person or something like that this uh, number is going to be lower okay this number is average 12 fps so for example if you are switching more than 12 images a second then it will look like a constant motion okay but if you are switching less than 12 fps less than 12 images a second it will look like images switching very very slow or it will just look like images like a slideshow or something got my point okay now let's talk about now let's give you a very very good example of this as well okay a very practical scenario which will sort of give you the introduction of what i'm talking about so if you guys are aware of flip flip book okay what is a flip book so this dude is my favorite and why it's, he's my favorite uh, is the reason is this okay this guy created the drawing and as you know the drawings does not move okay so he made these sketches of uh, one of uh, obviously everybody's favorite movie avengers uh, because superhero kisse nahi pasand hai okay so we got this avengers sketch one sketch two sketch three sketch and this is the final outcome which he is going to show so again thousands of uh, sketches like that and what is the final outcome you may ask look at this okay so you you already do motion in this video okay there is no such thing as moving paper okay you cannot move things on paper but he is switching the paper so fast that it looks like a movie all right the the motion the frame uh, you can say fps uh, at the speed at which the the movie is changing the frames are changing is so good that it looks like it's it's already in motion got my point so i hope you guys uh, enjoyed that video because i do okay now let's talk about algorithms okay you uh, there's no way you are into computer science and you might not heard of this buzzword which is algorithms so what is algorithm okay so algorithm is sort of heart of computer science without algorithm there is no program and if you think about it what is actually an algorithm so algorithm is nothing but a map okay now you might already know about the sky map okay so they did some logic of course there is going to be some logic that okay 65 is a good place to start with a okay that was the logic that was the algorithm behind our sky okay similarly there has to be a map between input and output and we call that map a function okay so for example if we talk about a function y is equal to x plus 1 and y is the output so for example if this function is there and x is the input so whatever the input if whatever you fill the value for example you fill the value 3 it's going to be come here and process by y is equal to x plus 1 so it's going to compute for y and that's going to be x plus 1 means 3 plus 1 the output is going to be 4 okay and rest the function the logic behind this is being treated from a beginner's perspective as a black box and we don't we are not going to talk about that but it's the complete perspective if somebody has to if somebody asks me to define computer science i'm going to explain this map okay this is super important treat this diamond as a black box treat this uh, between uh, center guy as a black box you don't have to care about what is happening in between but there's a map between input and output okay and there's a whole science of figuring out what is happening between this diamond between this section and what is this science called that science is called deep learning okay so if you talk about deep learning deep learning basically sees the input and output and 
sort of tries to uh, calculate what is going to be why the input is mapped to output in such a way that it is okay so it tries to figure out what are the decisions that are being taken to choose the mapping between input and output so it basically the processing of input and output and understanding of the black box Okay. so that's all what deep learning does okay there's a concept called back propagation and all those i i talk about all those stuff in my other talks uh, which i uh, uh, host on xrdi so definitely if you are interested in uh, back propagation if you are interested in derivatives and all those so definitely come to uh, that channel i'll talk about that okay so now let's talk about next you understood what is algorithm what is the best way to create algorithm let's take a practical scenario okay let's build an algorithm by yourself okay so for example if you have to find somebody's name in a dictionary for example his her name is a uh, sneha okay so to find the name sneha in a dictionary Okay. you have to care about something you have to uh, assume that this this dictionary since it's a dictionary is scheduled uh, dictionary is a not a good place to find words so i'm going to make it a contact contact list or what do we call it a call dictionary or something yeah okay so in this uh, call directory yeah that's a proper word in this call directory the sneha name is going to be there and you have to find it but to find that name you have to uh, understood that this name is organized in such a way that a is on the first page and s is somewhere in the middle okay so got it so what is the best way to find sneha in this directory okay uh, you can start uh, the book you can uh, start reading the book open it on the first place you will find all the names written by a okay there's no sneha flip the next page all the a's no sneha flip 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 you get to b all b's no sneha flip 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 c flip 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 d so on then you reach to s and then you'll find sneha and voila you find sneha is it the right algorithm the answer is yes it works okay is it the sufficient algorithm answer is no it takes a lot of time okay so no matter if the algorithm is, is even right it's not very necessary that it's sufficient to do that okay so what is the sufficient algorithm for this let's try to build that okay the sufficient algorithm is going to be very impractical i'll tell you but what if i take the dictionary let me give you um yeah this will give you a perspective okay let me take the dictionary and rip apart the dictionary in half okay i'm a very aggressive hulk kind of personality so i decided to rip apart the dictionary in half to find sneha in it okay okay what i see on left hand i see all the names with m on right hand i see all the names with n okay now i said oh this left hand is between a to m there's no way sneha is going to be the in there okay so i'm going to throw this left hand dictionary okay uh, don't do this uh, at your home okay now on the right hand i have all the names n to z i rip apart the dictionary in half all right and then i see on left hand i have names from s on right hand i have names from t okay i rip i throw the right hand because between t to z is not going to be sneha and in the left hand uh, where uh, the s name starts is going to be sneha somewhere all right is this algorithm uh, correct the answer is yes this one works too you will be able to find okay is this algorithm sufficient yes much more this one is much more optimized you will find way faster why for example if somebody uh, if the dictionary is 500 pages and somebody adds 500 pages more to this dictionary how many steps more it will take you to compute okay the answer is just one more step because in just one rip off you are going to eliminate 500 more pages so that is sort of computational thinking what i want you to have in your heads okay that is the sort of logical thinking because the computer science is worthless without logics it's all about logic 
it's the job of the most logical person in the world okay if you are not a very logical person in your life i do not recommend you to join this if you are a philosophical person please don't come into computer science okay so now let's talk about uh, we found a very good algorithm in fact these are practical algorithm the first one in which you are uh, checking each and every page that algorithm is basically known as uh, you you guess it right the bubble sort and the other algorithm in which you are ripping apart the dictionary that is a practical algorithm as well and it's known as the binary search got it so yeah so now we are going to talk about uh, again uh, if you talk about the numbers the complexity of bubble sort is n square the complexity of uh, the, this uh, binary search is o log n which is much much less the more amount of pages are going to be there the most efficient amount of uh, this uh, algorithm is going to be because this algorithm uh, logic logarithmic algorithm okay now let's talk about what is 3d okay so we understood images we understood videos and they were nothing but numbers so there's no way of thinking that 3d is going to be real obviously 3d is also nothing but numbers okay now you might heard of cartesian coordinates okay uh, all right so cartesian coordinate is a virtual space in which you plot some numbers i hope uh, somebody uh, made you understood what is virtual and what is physical because i do that in my previous sessions which are not part of this but you can find that on my youtube okay so uh, talking about this what is uh, yeah we have a virtual space and think of empty blank grid of infinity infinitely long empty space okay on this space there is somewhere there's origin okay and we call that origin yes you guessed it right zero 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 okay the origin of our empty virtual universe on this universe we plot a point okay okay we if we have to create a shape let's create the simplest possible uh, a cube okay so we plot a point and we plot the point at very center of this universe which is zero 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 cartesian coordinate based on uh, so uh, this uh, is a three-dimensional space which means there are uh, length breadth and height okay so uh, now talk about talking about length let's draw a line from the 0 0 0 into the right direction where is right positive x okay so we are going to draw second dot positive x 0 0 again it's on same plane okay the first dot the vertex one and again each this dot is going to be called as vertex okay the first dot at very origin 0 0 0 the second dot on positive right 0 0 0 okay now draw one dot just above this second dot okay in the y direction how do we go up in the y direction you have to move in the y direction stay same stay at same point at the x direction but move in the y direction and you got your third point okay so that's what it is doing making the third point similarly it's plotting the points of a box box like this uh, a box with all sides equal is called as cube Okay, so yeah we draw this cube this cube as you can see is five uh, meter uh, oh, sorry one meter thick and all okay so you got this cube up and running okay now we have these virtual points placed but these are just values there is no physical line uh, physical line being drawn on this space okay so now we have to develop some sort of algorithm to convert this imagination into practical object so this is again algorithm what i told you about so now let's talk about 3d rendering and how do we render all this box okay so there are several processes involved which basically finally renders this object okay what are these processes the first is vertex processor okay so what you already did you you placed uh, you created empty dots you created dots of an empty box uh, in the virtual space so similarly the machine in their own ram in their own understanding is going to plot this point and this is called vertex processing so whatever the inputs you have given the input is nothing but these values 
and all those so you tell machine these numbers and machine is start imagining start processing okay vertex 1 vertex 2 vertex 3 vertex 4 and start placing those vertex on the in on its virtual spaces okay so that's called vertex processing okay next next uh, very cool stuff is rasterization now rendering is not possible without a camera okay uh, the camera is the perspective point through which the rendering will happen i'll talk about that okay so let's keep in mind uh, like you have a real camera in your phone we create a virtual camera somehow uh, how this virtual camera is being created i'm going to take some sessions about rasterizer and ray tracers which are the way of rendering which are the rendering algorithms which will basically cover uh, the science of these uh, rendering and ren render cameras and all those okay so uh, yeah let's talk about rasterizer so what does rasterizer does from that perspective okay you draw a shape now its job is to calculate that how many pixels are being affected or are being overlapped by your shape okay that's the only job rasterizer has how many pixels are being affected by your virtual space okay so first it's plotted all these three points then it's going to decide that how many pixels are being affected okay so it says okay this pixel this pixel this pixel and how these pixels are mapped this pixels has a address a simple address a two-dimensional address like zero 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 one zero one one not zero one one okay but similar like that zero one two three and all those okay so so for example uh, let me uh, give you a perspective a little more here you can start adding numbers so for example this is x row okay and this is y row so how the number is going to be this row is going to be have an address 0 0 okay this row is going to be have an address 1 0 2 0 3 0 4 0 5 0 6 0 7 0 okay and so on this rows are going to be have address of this is this is x so this is going to be 0 again this is y so this is going to be 0 1 so this block has a different s this is 0 0 this is 0 1 this is 1 1 this is 2 1 this is 3 1 4 1 5 1 6 1 7 1 and so on so similarly whole block is added so each pixel has an address so this rasterizer will give the output of of the number of pixels which has these address so the output is going to be how many pixels are affected which means the output at the addresses of each pixels which are being affected by this shape you got the work of x uh, rasterizer cool okay so now we know how many address or how many pixels are being getting affected now we do a very important task we know that this pixel is getting affected but we don't know that what color to assign this pixel then comes fragment processor so fragment processor has a job to basically assign a color to a single pixel so it computes for that particular pixel and based on all the all the possibilities that what sort of light is there what sort of texture is there what sort of shading is there based on each and every possibility based on each and every factor it gives a single color to that pixel okay now we got shape now we got how many pixels are affected now we got color for those pixels which means we have rendered the object and then final final image final output of the complete scenario is being sent to your display okay so hopefully you got the perspective again i'm going to repeat that once it's going to first it's going to uh, put these blocks okay so it has added all these blocks now it has added the lines between these blocks which is called primitive processing now it's going to add the color for all these blocks which is uh, okay these pixels are decided now i'm going to say that uh, what should be the color of these pixels and now finally the final image is created and sent to frame buffers all right so as you already imagined as you already saw the process and you might have aware of uh, and you might got the idea that how tedious and how hard this job is okay for example even for doing even for rendering a single object a simplest object the cube 
this is a huge amount of numbers which are being added to this vertex processor as input all right so there's a lot of work of adding these numbers even to render a simple queue so there has to be so humans decided to make this process simpler and they designed these tools these tools are made on the, sa the same perspective the same principles but these tools help you to put all these dots all these values you don't have to care about what value is going to be there for that particular vertex but you can this this uh pro, this softwares are going to help you putting those values into that number okay into uh that particular origin orientation or orient position in 3d space all right so these tools are called as artistic tool if you have good artistic skills you can express your art and forget the technology behind it and use these tools to put each and every individual point and these tools help you to put those individual points and the output of these tools is again whole bunch of numbers so each pixel of this face is representing some sort of number again there are a bunch of uh, advancement there are a bunch of thing like there is occlusion map there is bump map there is diffuse bunch of th things being calculated and everything is nothing but just some numerical values got it now these are artistic tools but there are some engineering tools as well which help you uh, which help you get the output from the artist and use it or animate it or uh, the best word is animate okay so these tools are known as uh, unity unreal and Bedrock. these are the most uh, used tools most popular tools and the what they do basically they are the physics and rendering engine okay so they let you move these objects whatever the artist has created here you can import these objects in these tools and these tools allow you to move to move those objects in such a way that it looks physically correct uh, uh, and uh, yeah rendering uh, lighting wise correct and all those okay? so these are physics and rendering engines which you use now you may ask about what is depth okay so the, what is 3d okay so you might notice the output of a renderer is a 2d image because it's a collection of pixels and pixels are 2d it's a two dimensional pixels of uh, two dimensional array of pixels okay nothing more so what is 3d why 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 3d i mean where is 3d okay where do we perceive depth what is the solution and here is the answer okay this is the earliest uh, it's 1878 and uh, you can see we figured out a very cool thing about human eyes okay if this image is not about the technology this image is how our eyes work we god has given us two eyes why two eyes because live we live in a three-dimensional world and to perceive images of three-dimensional world world we develop two eyes okay so for example i want what i want to do uh yeah do this exercise with me and you are going to love this okay uh, put a finger like this in front of your eyes uh, a few inches from your nose okay close your left eye then look at your finger close your right eye open left eye and do this rapidly interchange close one open other what you see you see two perspective okay the left perspective of your hand the right perspective of your hand from each and other uh, different uh, images are getting uh, rendered by your eyes from left perspective from right perspective okay and why these are being added with a simple offset okay and this simple offset let you calculate a lot of things about 3d okay so because you are looking one image from two different angles your brain can compute the difference between two images okay it's a hard process but your brain can compute difference between these two images and calculate okay i'm looking this one this size 
and this big is being uh, lo uh, being uh, seen and i'm looking this from this size and this is the how much it's being uh, uh, visible so how big is going to be uh, this object or how far is going to be this object okay all this calculation is being done by your brain whenever somebody does it all right so now we created this sort of uh, idea that okay what if i send this image from the left eye only not from the right eye i cover the right eye and this image from the right eye only not left eye i cover the left eye what will happen and this image is also special this image has two different perspective very slightly different perspective when we recreate that you get a sensation that you are looking at depth you are seeing the object in 3d okay? and this principle from uh, the year 1878 till now is exactly the same okay so we used to have in 80s these sort of glasses the blue the the red okay and uh, these give you the 3d uh, image why these give you 3d image because the movie which you, we used to show on these uh, uh, glasses was color coded on blue and green for example the blue frame will not be able to pass by this blue filter this blue filter will filter the blue frame and only the red uh, light will be more sufficient to this the blue will merge with this blue okay the red frame will only let pass the blue filter the red light will submerge in this red and the blue will pass okay you got my point so when we do that you get two different images from one single uh, complete image from one complex image you get two simple images in your head okay why these are simple images on your left eye you are different uh, you are getting a different image on your right eye you are getting a different image and we have a color code filters to uh, basically uh, dist uh, uh, subtract those images from that uh, single image okay so the same idea is being used uh, now as well uh, but uh, we have this technology okay so what we did we this this sort of glasses sir, are I have no one question, sir. yeah sure sure what about uh, the subtraction part you have told just now that i cannot uh, uh, trace out uh, subtraction of two images blue filter through blue filter and through red filter mm. after that what you said about subtraction of two images yeah sure sure let me let me also give you a perspective so suppose if you wear a blue uh, blue glass okay hmm. now what will happen when you look at something blue okay it will since everything is looking blue that blue light will not uh, you will not be able to differentiate between that blue light the that blue light will look something like white or something like uh, red uh, sorry something like white or something like black okay based on the intensity of blue okay but not on uh, not not will not look like blue okay the blue will not be able to pass from blue mm. okay but the red mm. will pass very very well mm. got it the red mm. will uh, look very different uh, because it will be able to pass from blue but blue mm. will not be able to pass from blue okay so that's how the that uh, in from the whole image in which from uh, let me show you um, how the 3d image looks like okay uh, 3d video can you see okay yes. look at this this has blue and you can see there is a blue and you can see the shift as well the blue the red is a little shifted towards left the blue is little shifted towards right you can see mm. focus on these uh, rail tracks you can clearly uh -huh. see the offset between them is same which means they are the same image okay okay got it the blue is a little shifted to this uh, uh, and, and the red is a little shifted to this okay which mm. means uh, they are two images which are pasted on or uh, on top of each other got my point yes. when yes, you pass yes. when when you wear a blue glass the blue light will not be able to pass mm -hmm. and the red red light will pass significantly 
okay which means you will be able to see only the red image on this the blue image will disappear on top of that that's how the sub sub subscription uh, sub uh, subtraction will happen okay acha in the in the same from the red filter the red light will not pass the blue light will pass significantly you will see only the blue part in the red eye acha got when you see uh, when when you see uh, collectively you will get different image this uh, the whole uh, video is only one but you will receive two different videos in your two different images mm -hmm. got it a slightly different yeah. a slight shift is there okay so that's okay. how the depth works we have okay. to send two different image to two different eyes that's how depth work so right now what okay. we do this this is a very traditional 70s 80s method of doing that how do we do it now okay oh, so now okay. there's a technology uh, called active shutter okay so there is a laser uh, on on whatever the screen you are looking at i'm targeting is imax screen and these uh, glasses have a sensor uh, which are related to that shutter uh, that uh, uh, laser which are uh, sensitive to that laser so for example now what we do now we don't have to submerge those images like you saw in the traditional method we used to submerge those images now we don't have to do that we have this technology okay so what this does whenever it's sending whenever it's showing the image for the left eye on the screen okay it sent the signal from the projector from from the screen to this camera which is looking for that laser the 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 message is being sent through a laser okay and is being sent to all the viewers uh, which are in present in the theater simultaneously at at very high speed for example if i have to show you a 60 fps movie for 3d i have to make it 120 fps to be able to produce 60 fps frames okay now imagine how is this is happening okay so whenever i am showing picture on the left uh, eye for the left eye on the screen i block i send a message to block the right eye the right eye has an active shutter okay there is a chemically based active shutter whenever these glasses are uh, some sort of glasses in which if you pass a electrical signal if you pass electricity through these glasses the chemical reaction will happen and glass will become black okay Th there is a method okay so we black one glass and let the picture of left image pass through only left eye only left class left area of this glass okay so what will you will see from the left eye the left image whenever we will show the right image just after that okay in a very slight tiny second gap what you will see only the image from the right eye because the message is coming to block the left eye the left this glass will pass a electrical pulse into this left into, into this left eye and the left eye is being blocked left eye is being made black okay so you'll signal now uh, receive signal now only for the right eye and it happens so fast so fast that in one second it happens 120 times your brain will not be able to uh, see the message of blocking frames okay and it will perceive this as okay left image is there right image is there everything is uh, working fine okay but in reality the left and right are constantly switching on the screen but you will not be able to see the difference got it this is a very fascinating technology it's a engineering marvel and i can say totally say okay and it it totally works so to capture 3d image what we have to do as i already saw so uh, told you do that experiment with the uh, one finger in front of your nose you already know that there has to be two different perspective how to capture that two different perspective the answer is capture them with two different cameras this is a 3d camera and it has two sensors for the left eye for the right eye okay so at the run time we are capturing the footage jurassic park is 3d because it is captured in 3d at the first place okay there's no way there is way now machine learning is improving we can also do all sort of stuff i should not say there's no way but 
yeah there, this is the best way to capture uh, a 2d uh, scenario or a real world scenario in the real world format in the 3d format okay so it will capture two different image for the single time frame something is happening it will capture from the left perspective and from the right perspective and this has a very small distance similar to what is the distance between the eyes and when this image is being sent that's how you got the left left image right image you send this image to uh, the, the viewers uh, through active shutter or to the traditional matter whichever way you send doesn't really matter okay and that's how we saw 3d okay. now i'll talk about 360 has anyone experienced ever a 360 image a 360 video let me give you an example first all right so suppose you watch movies all the time all right you watch movies all the time you know what is a movie but how will it feel to be inside the movie how would it look like to be inside a movie to do skydiving with someone so this is the way of uh, movie in which we can send you inside the movie this is the vr one i'm not going to play this one this is the real footage okay so look at this this is this looks like a video but it's not just a video because in which in this i can look at any perspective i can choose to look up down left or right i can look at the complete picture i can see what everyone is doing but from one perspective okay from this point of view okay, from this particular point i can choose to look anywhere in this image anywhere okay in 360 wherever this is not just one single video okay i can choose to look this because in a single video you there's no interactivity you cannot decide where you want to look you are bounded by the vision of director wherever the director want you to look you will look there okay in this you can look anywhere you want got it you want to look at the sea do it you want to look at the plane do it okay so this is called 3d video and how 3d videos are captured for uh, covering the two images from a dis dis uh, different uh, perspective you need a uh, two camera but to cover the surrounding video this is the facebook surround 360 and there is insta 360 so there are these sort of cameras and on these cameras there are a pair of multiple lenses okay in all the direction and they cover from the same instance they cover multiple videos of the scene and there is a technique called image stitching okay we stitch all the images coming from this uh, camera okay and by the time now the software already provided with these cameras so the software stitch all those images and in, in some format the software is, is built built in even so you already got the stitched image at runtime from these cameras and the output is that okay so the same idea uh, this per, this perspective 1878 okay we are using the same idea still now for sending different images to different eyes you can see there is different image being sent to different eye this is the something similar you saw a paper with a lens or something like that this is much this machine is called sensorama it's a uh, way ahead of its time and uh, uh, i covered a vr history video on my youtube channel so you guys must check that video out okay that video is fascinating that will blow your mind about vr history okay so it's it's a cool history i covered in that so i'm not going to talk about a lot of in this video because time is a constant okay this is super cockpit uh, made for in 80s it was used to train pilots for again uh, for for, for uh, uh, flight because again if you give a no pilot a plane it's going to crash okay so to save a lot of money it, it they built vr version since 80s 
and now it's uh, evolving even much more this is a very uh, this is sega vr they never released it because uh, it, the technology at that time was not there but they were planning there's a virtual boy they released but they failed and this is the only success of throughout uh, the entire human history of consumer uh, market vr this is uh, the uh, the oculus uh, quest uh, so oculus rift and now the next version of these the quest 2 is there so if i tell you uh, to buy a virtual reality headset uh, if i tell you to do that in 2017 2018 even in 2019 it used to cost at least 2 lakh rupees now what is the cost of virtual reality headset and i'm not talking about just the headset i'm talking about state of the art machine I'm talking about best in the class state of the art machine and it's less than 50,000 okay if you want to invest in future if you want to invest in virtual reality order this uh, headset on Amazon I'm not taking any commission from the Amazon to sell this but I recommend this I because I'm working towards virtual reality I definitely recommend it previously one year back I bought similar he headset and uh, I bought it in at 90,000 rupees you can see now the price is literally the half and it's still in India it's uh, almost double the price in fact more than double uh, in in US it's around 21,000 22,000 in India it's selling at 47,000 so uh, since there's no demand there are high prices there is a lot of import duties and all those so it, they had to sell high okay so but if you want to invest in virtual reality this is the world's best option right now okay uh, it's standalone you don't need a pc and you can start working but if you want a pc if you want full power of vr you can also do that in fact the standalone version has quite powerful it has hand track it has everything so i made a full video on uh, oculus quest as well and uh, oculus quest release as well you what you can check on uh, my youtube channel so yeah definitely uh, again i am talking about a lot uh, of my youtube channel and all about my community so i'm these are my personal links these are my community link you can definitely join the india's biggest community of virtual reality augmented reality these are all the links which are required for you to join okay so i'll share this pdf with you guys and you guys i wish you a great great uh, happy and successful journey in the field of virtual reality and extended reality developers of india is always ready to help you guys build whatever you want to build collaborate and all sort of stuff okay so we are india's biggest community because we are doing all sort of stuff from collaboration from uh, education from podcast let me show you my website once okay so yeah so till then if you ha guys have any uh, questions about the session please do ask i hope you got some knowledge the session is pretty much at the end uh, so yeah so this is our website uh, website on website you will get all the links and on yeah, you can basically you can know what what uh, what who i who we are what we do okay so uh, we here is uh, what we are working towards here are some of the events which we uh, did in past one year this is the podcast which i host on our uh, platform uh, podcasts are the uh, very cool way to know about industries and industry experts so these are uh, not just india's best these are world's best people in the industry you can read about them you can uh, have a conversation with them you can on my channel obviously and you can uh, know more about them these are world leaders of uh, xr community okay and i'm really privileged that uh, i know all of this. i mean all of them uh, get uh, connecting with xr and uh, doing sessions with us so yeah yeah there we did sessions that, that we have several partners in the industry and we have more than 70 companies partnering with us in this uh, industry so yeah again uh, if you guys have any questions please do ask i'm more than happy to answer all your questions guys uh you guys are already professors please ask your questions we, we would so, love to Amisa, answer. Yep. good afternoon this is gurpreet this side hi gurpreet so, yeah. i am an educator uh basically dealing with the uh, grade 11 and 12 students
Awesome. Um, although I do uh, take sessions for the younger ones also, but yes. my speciality is 11 and 12. Hmm. Uh, I have a question. So you uh, you have been talking about, uh, uh, you know, extended reality and VR and all that. Uh, yeah. uh, very interesting session. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. My concern is that <clears throat> a lot of people are saying that, you know, the VR headsets are too heavy and mm. we should not allow our students to kind of uh, have an extended, uh, you know, uh, kind of session on that. How true is that and what are your views on that? Yeah, uh, I, I made a video on VR ethics. Okay. So when you are building virtual reality experience, you have to care a lot of things uh, you have to so when you are uh, sort of get, making someone wear a vr headset you have to care about that because he's your vr rider okay you are letting them experience a virtual reality experience so you have to care about them okay? so it it has some sort of guidelines and uh, there is no such evidence or no such case of uh, for example eye weakness or anything related to this so far and the technology is already there for more than uh, 10 hours in commercial purpose and more than 30 uh, years sorry hours nahi, years uh, and more than 30 years in non-commercial and professional uh, purposes but there's no sign of uh, vision uh, reduction or anything uh, uh, related to that okay so yeah but still if you are new to this technology you it's it's very meant to face some sort of uh, problems uh, medical problems like nausea it's very common but these problems the nausea will happen if somebody is for example using uh, the headset for more than 30 minutes or something or some people are more prone to uh, problems like nausea in in the early phases as well okay uh, so uh, it's it's person to person like nausea is like seasickness or uh, some people have feel uh, sick when they travel in car or some something like that so it's something like that okay so the answer to this is uh, people start getting better after a uh, regular use so if somebody is using for the first time they face is more but over the period of regular use they get comfortable with that and yeah there is no harm or no uh, uh, problem related to eye or head or neck being proven till now and it's uh, worldwide adopted technology in fact it's the future talking about the size and weight uh, already there are super cool scientists working all over the world reducing the size for example if i talk about the geo glass which is 70 gram uh, headset which is will be on your head so it's 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 actually literally a glass it's a it's not a complete headset so if i talk about um, uh, my headset which is uh, approximately half a kg which sits on your head the geo glass is just 70 gram it sits like a normal eyeglass on your eyes and it does the job so yeah the scientists are working towards reducing the size and all those problems uh, there will definitely be a little bit discomfort on the uh, um, on on the region of your nose or something like that based on the comfort of your headset on all that but yeah these are very short term problems and uh, the, the advantages what you get in this technology is nowhere in comparison with the disadvantages for example, uh, this is this is uh, not just a gaming technology. If you if I did an industry perspective, which I used to do in uh, several sessions, you can visit. Uh, let me show you my uh, YouTube channel, which is this uh, extended reality developers of India community. Okay, so we have this YouTube channel called YouTube.com/xrdi. Okay, so we have plenty of videos available and in which you'll find the first session of series uh, hold on let me go to okay in which i talk about how essential this technology is and what is the uh, basically uh, what is the future of this technology if you follow that session the advancement and, and and the necessity of having this technology or using this technology or understanding this is so huge that all the little bit of problems are negligible literally okay so if i talk go to playlist uh, go to youtube.com xrdi tv 
okay on which you'll find several playlists there are uh, podcast episodes there are educational sessions this is my master class so this is a one week session about uh, extended reality and each session is you can already uh, where is the playlist yeah each session is uh, there are seven sessions the each session is uh, one and a one and a half hour long and i talk about in depth about the technologies give you hands on perspective and in the first uh, chapter i talk about the first day i talk about the industry size and the industry size is expected in 20 uh, 20 uh, 25 it's expected to be more than 400 billion dollars it's a huge industry uh, I think the, the advantages are much more huge than the disadvantage. Obviously, there is a little bit of comfort, but uh, it depends on the headset. It, it depends on the brand, the quality and all this. Thank you. Thank you so much for that answer, sir. Thank you. Yeah. So I hope this answers. If anyone has any sort of question, because I love questions and you guys are professors, you know how you much love questions. Yeah. So, yeah, Soumya, it looks like uh, everybody is done and we are out time. Yes, sir. Thanks to your detailed presentation. I suppose nobody has any other queries. Okay. So, thank you so much, Mr. Happy, for delivering the conceptual features and providing the in-depth knowledge on formulating AR and VR. Uh, now, okay. So, thank you so much to all our active participants as well and for their queries for the for the beautiful questions and most importantly many thanks to all our esteemed speakers who gave their valuable consent to grace this program now with this may i now request uh, professor pradarshi kangu to kindly conclude today's program uh, uh, sir are you there thank you thank you Swamya, madam yes sir. thank you uh, sir. mr avi thanks for the nice presentation as new for me, for virtual uh, VR and AR system, still I am enjoying. Thank you very much. And thanks to Roshan uh, for organizing and uh, arranging of such uh, kind of uh, speakers, which will definitely, I think, after this, after the last three days, the next three days, we will learn many things in this AR and VR. And we we'll start also practicing the AR VR in developing some laboratory experiment as well as in teaching module. Thank you. Thank you very much. Really, thank you really, yeah, really, really. Thank you, Dr. Priyadarshi. And I have one request to all the teachers who are listening to me right now. I have a one huge request. Okay. And uh, this is for all your students. Uh, I, I wish you a uh, very, very success with their careers as well, because uh, a student career success is the ultimately the success of the teacher. So please do recommend them joining this channel, which is XRDA. It's for their benefit. I'm sure they'll learn a lot about the technology they will hear each week about the technology they will uh, grow towards this technology and eventually will reach to our uh, subject so please share uh, i'm going to share this link of my channel please share this link to uh, with your students to whatever the whatsapp or whatever the platform on which you are following them so you can share this link with your uh, your students so that they can be a part of this ever growing community of xr people we are really healthy community and we are really happy to help everyone collaborating with us i do agree with you that student will get a lot of benefit now when the student will join in industry also after pandemic if you look at this vr and ar uh, if you look at their market is also growing what you told the prediction is correct also industry and uh, yesterday i think uh, yes yesterday uh, the speaker told about that uh, marketing of a building, uh, uh, real estate. Yep. They did it well because of this VR and AR system. Surely. Anyway, uh, definitely I will share with our students. Even uh, we'll try to develop a kind of a elective subject on this AR and VR. Yeah, yeah. And thank you so very much. I have shared the link already. Somebody is saying to share the link. I've already shared the link, uh, Ms. Tulip, on uh, this channel. So you can uh, on the chat uh, so you can definitely find it so let me know if you guys got it yeah yeah okay she got it okay thank so you, thank, you. thank you everyone it's it's amazing thank you Soumya thank you Roshan thank you Dr. Priyad thank Priyadarshi. you sir. amazing it's, and have a great time guys bye